Nicknamed the Floating City, Venice is famed for its romantic canals, gondola rides and impressive bridges. And because, well, it's built on water. As millions of tourists continue to visit each year, its residents are going the other way. In just 70 years, its population has declined from over 170,000 to below 50,000. But why? It's because Venice is sinking, and irreversibly so. Building a city on water is in itself improbable, but to build a city which flourished with as much art, culture and architecture as Venice has is almost unbelievable. Venice grew due to its strategic location as a trading point between the East and the West, but Venice is not the city it once was. Climate change and subsiding foundations are causing major problems. So bad in fact, some scientists estimate Venice may be fully submerged as early as 2100. Before we can understand why Venice is sinking and how the plans to save it are failing, we need to discuss how it's actually built on water and why they decided to do that in the first place. There is one human emotion which causes us to do extremely irrational things, such as, you know, build a city on water, and that emotion is fear. In the 5th century AD, barbarian conquerors were terrorising Italy, causing a mass migration of people. A marshy lagoon inhabited by a few poor fishermen provided a safe haven for the refugees. But as the refugee numbers grew, so did the demands for proper infrastructure, and so, on Friday the 25th of March, 421 AD, Venice was born. Venice is built upon a marshy wetland, which, in parts, can hardly support human weight, never mind a house or St Mark's Basilica. So how is it done? A few metres below is a layer of hard clay. An important piece of information here is that this hard clay is like a very dense rubber, strong enough for a foundation, but not as hard as rock. You start by piling wood into the mud until you hit the hard clay. You pack the wood as tightly as possible. Not only does it compact the mud between them, but it also pushes the water out, making it much harder. This process was largely done by hand, a very laborious job. But as technology advanced, wood piling machines were created and eventually more heavy machinery allowing them to go deeper and faster. On top of this, they placed horizontal wood planks and on top of that, impermeable limestone. This created a foundation strong enough to start building brick buildings above the waterline. The obvious question at this point is, why doesn't the wood rot? Because they are tightly packed and fully submerged, they have no contact with oxygen. Microorganisms cannot do their work to break down the wood. Combine this with the fact the salt water petrifies the wood, it actually becomes a much harder material, practically turning into stone. Some buildings in Venice still lie on foundations built over 1,000 years ago. So now we know how Venice is built, why is it sinking? There are multiple factors which, when combined, are causing Venice's very real and very problematic sinking problem, with the first being subsidence. Remember the hard clay I mentioned earlier? Because it isn't quite as hard as stone, naturally, thousands of tons of pressure from the buildings above will cause slight sinking. On average, it sinks one to two millimeters per year. Technically, Venice started sinking the day it was built. To make matters worse, historically, the city relied on artisan wells as a source of fresh water. Over many centuries, excessive groundwater extraction from these wells led to the clay and sediment layers beneath Venice to compress. The increased subsidence was so bad in the 50s and 60s that they were eventually banned. One of the biggest problems Venice faces is a phenomenon called aqua alta, which means high water in English. Aqua alta happens due to a combination of the tides, a strong south wind, and the periodic movement of seawater leading to rising water levels. Whilst it's an expected and natural occurrence, the issue is that it's happening more frequently and more severely due to climate change. In 2019, the aqua alta got up to 187 centimetres, which is six foot and one inch. 
the second highest flooding ever recorded. When this happened, over 80% of Venice was flooded. Some tourists have been seen to enjoy the flooding on their visit, but it's no laughing matter for the Venetians. When these floods are at their worst, they begin to decay foundations and even make some ground floors inhabitable. Speaking of tourists, they also create another problem for Venice. Many arrive in the Venetian lagoon via large cruise ships. These massive vessels displace large volumes of water, generating wakes and vibrations that can damage the fragile foundations of buildings. All this movement from cruise ships also affects the quality of water of the Venetian canals. The discharge of water waste and pollutants into the lagoon affects the health of marine life. In an attempt to combat this in 2021, the Italian government implemented a law to ban ships weighing more than 25,000 tonnes, longer than 180 metres or with other characteristics that would make them too polluting or overwhelming for Venice's marine environment. And then finally, the most obvious one, as climate change is worsening, sea levels are rising, which negatively affects Venice. Evidently, Venice is spiralling towards a future of being submerged, so huge action is needed if it's to have any chance of survival. Meet Mose, or as long-winded name, the Experimental Electromechanical Module. Essentially, it's a defensive barrier consisting of 78 mobile gates, each 20 meters wide, placed in three strategic locations. The barriers lie underwater, but can be raised to isolate the lagoon from the Adriatic Sea in times of heightened water levels, which protects Venice from flooding. Sounds great, doesn't it? Well, not really. One of the biggest problems the Mohs project has had is that it was conceived in 1992. Construction began in 2003 and was expected to be completed by 2011. Despite a few successful deployments of Mohs, it still isn't at 100% operational capacity, but it is expected to be by the end of 2023, 31 years after its conception. 31 years is a long time, especially when considering environmental changes. In that time, the goalposts have moved in terms of what may be needed to save Venice in the future. Sea levels may rise so severely that Mohs will have to be deployed as a permanent wall. However, this isn't really an option. It would alter the exchange of water from the Adriatic Sea with the Venetian Lagoon, which would completely destroy its marine ecosystem. A pessimist may say that spending a whopping $6 billion, more than three times higher than projected, and a cost of 350000 each time the barriers are raised, is a very expensive and wasteful short-term solution. But an optimist may say that even if Mohs only works for 20 to 30 years, that it's worthwhile considering the damage Venice faces every time it floods. Other solutions have been suggested, such as injecting fluid cement in the water below or pumping water underneath, essentially the reverse of draining the artisan wells in the 60s. The long-term solution to saving Venice is likely a combination of these ideas rather than just one. The uncertainty and fragility of Venice's future is just another reminder of the choices we make today can and will shape the future of our planet. And the only way to save one of the most iconic and culture-rich cities in the world is through collective action.